A new form of propaganda has entered the fray in the Ukraine-Russia war, and that's the use of deep fakes. Now, CEO and co-founder of Metaphysic.ai, Tom Graham, joins us now to discuss. Tom, welcome to Rising. Thank you for having me. And, and so, Tom, the, and I guess we want to play this first, but there have been a couple of different attempts at, at deep fakes on, on both sides. There's uh, one that uh, clearly uh, anti-Ukrainian anti elements uh, posted of uh, Zelensky. Uh, let's play a little bit of that. So as you just saw in the video, you, you can see juxtaposed the fake video that was created as what is described as a deep fake. And then on the other side, you saw the real video. And I think still at this point, there's a pretty clear difference. Even if you didn't have the real video as a point of comparison, the fake version of that video um, is, is still pretty obviously fake. Um, wouldn't you say? That seems to be the case that this technology is still uh, at the point where it's, it's easily identifiable, at least in the, the sense that it was used or weaponized. Um, it was pretty identifiable as a fake. Yes, I think that's absolutely true. Uh, you can really see there's a difference between the face and the body. Um, and just on an emotional level, uh, when something is uncanny, when it doesn't look like it's really a human, but it's trying to look like a human, uh, it makes people kind of uncomfortable. And when you look at that fake image, you know, you get kind of an emotional reaction, which is one of discomfort and being slightly weirded out. So that's kind of the gut check, as it were, as to whether something is fake or not. Yeah, he looks like a video game. Right. Yeah, yeah. he does kind of. Yes. He, yes, exactly. Looks like uh, like a football player or a soccer player in, in like in one of the better video games. Right. Uh, and there was one of these of Putin going around as as well, trying to putting basically, you know, putting words into his his mouth. Is there is there is there any evidence that they're catching on? Or do you think that the technology is still at a place where everybody across the spectrum, even if you hate Zelensky or you hate Putin, you still are like, hmm, I don't that looks like a FIFA uh, looks like a FIFA player. <laughs> yeah, so I believe that the technology has moved to a point where you can create something which is hyper real, but it's extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. And it seems that in these cases, uh, it's not clear exactly who created these deep fakes, but they were um, put together in a way which was not kind of, I believe, leveraging the best versions of this technology um, or not with specific expertise, uh, potentially in a rush. So I think that uh, we may deal with more better quality deep fakes in the future, but currently it's relatively hard to access that kind of technology and the expertise is extremely limited around the world. I want to keep pulling at that thread because it seems to be the heart of the matter. Is the barrier to entry at this, uh, it's cost and expertise, I imagine. So is the ability to do something like this convincingly well um, at the hands of like very powerful people? Or is it the sort of thing that um, you, know, you can still have random people on the internet coming up with extremely high quality deepfakes just because they have the knowledge of how to do it? Or again, is this something that like really only governments or powerful anti-government interests have the capability to do at this point? And then at what point does that change? So I actually think that the people who can create hyper real deep fakes, which are very convincing, um, that group of people is extremely small and it doesn't necessarily correspond with high powered governments or that kind of uh, large technology organization. The technology is extremely new and very difficult to use. And I believe that uh, from my experience, the people who can do it particularly well just have domain expertise over a number of years and are not necessarily embedded in governments or big tech corporations. Let's take a look at that Putin one real quick. I am Vladimir Putin, the most hated man in the world. I have an important message. Please, stand with Ukraine. They need your help and your solidarity against my brutal and criminal invasion. Please, donate whatever you can to help Ukraine. До свидания и мир. And so, and so that one's not even trying to trick people. It's like obvious parody, but it, it, but it still doesn't. It still gives you that feeling that I'm just watch, I'm watching something that's not real. So, yeah. who like, why is it so difficult? Like, what would it take for somebody to make one of those, and you'd say, okay, I know that's not real because Putin wouldn't say that, 
but it really does look real. Rather than, I know that's not real, Putin wouldn't say that, and also, it doesn't look real. Yeah, I think the technical elements that have to come together in order to create something that looks extremely real are um, a lot of experience manipulating deep neural nets and these types of algorithms, which is really at the cutting edge of artificial intelligence research today, combined with a set of creative skills uh, around VFX and CGI, uh, like tools and skill sets that you might find in movies. So bringing together those couple of things, uh, the results that you can achieve are certainly much better than what we've seen here today. Yeah, Matt, and again, just this is sort of getting at where this could be going and how quickly this could be going there. Um, there has been a lot of, I think, hyperventilating and hyperbole about the threat of deep fakes when still at this point what we're seeing is the video clips that we just played. Um, is, there, is there a reason to have very real fear that in the very near future, um, convincing deep fakes of Zelensky could make their way around the internet um, or into, you know, the, the, or across the sort of desks of the people who would need to see it in a way that, that is actually so convincing it could have major consequences? I think this specific instance, the Zelensky deepfake in this case, is a good example of um, systems that can be put in place to deal with that kind of misinformation. So I believe that Zelensky himself uh, verified that it wasn't him in a very, very short period of time. And uh, I believe that there was quite a bit of intelligence around Russians potentially using deep fakes leading up to that. And there was quite a lot of preparation uh, around the media um, and people who would report on this kind of thing to make people aware that there could be something fake popping up in the future. And so I think it's that combination of awareness um, amongst general population, regular people, amongst the media, people who distribute this kind of information and also uh, the technical ability to, to pick up whether something is a deep fake or not, those two things coming together make a big difference in the impact that this kind of media will have in the future. Yeah, how, how easily can you pick it up? Like, does it leave a fingerprint? In other words, if, if you get it and you look at kind of the source code or whatever behind the, the video, can you see it? Or, if you, or can you just get rid of all of that as, as you move it through multiple layers of media? I think it's relatively easy to remove artifacts if you were to step down imagery and compress it or mm -hmm. um, move it from something that's higher resolution onto a mobile phone and then export that. So it is relatively difficult to detect highly sophisticated deep fakes. However, in the cases that we've seen here, I think that even to the naked eye, it's relatively obvious. And so there are definitely some things that people can look for in order to quickly ascertain that something is a fake or not. And, you know, the first one I feel is that kind of emotional gut check. Does this look a little bit strange to me? And I think that, you know, one message should be for everybody around the world that um, if you see something that looks like it's been manipulated, if it doesn't quite feel right, maybe take a beat and uh, a pause before forwarding it on into the internet or reacting in an outrageous way or, you know, uh, hyperbole, et cetera. And also the surprise of this segment, I'm actually not here. <laughs> this is a deep fake Ryan Graham, right. who's also somehow just like slamming coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Digitally slamming coffee. Yeah. Tom, th uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Right. We'll be back with more Rising right after this. <laughs>